Praise Lord, my brothers and sisters. This is Apostle Joseph Stafford, the president and founder of the Man from Heaven Ministries. And we're here today to give you more kingdom principles. We're going to talk today about some things that are beneficial to our growth in God and also where are the things we need to be looking at on a longer term basis. So today I'm going to share with you some thoughts, some prayers, and also some scripture that will help you move in the right direction. So let's begin with prayer. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus coming before you now with all honor and praise. Thank you, God, for forgiving us of our sins and allowing us to walk according to you in uprightness based upon the blood of Jesus being upon us. I pray, now, God, now that those that are looking at the video will hear what the Spirit has said to the church, the eyes of understanding be open to receive the rhema word that God has for them. And those that have hearts of stone, behold, the heart becomes stones of a heart of flesh that they can receive the word that you have prepared for them. Father, we give you praise right now in Jesus' name, and thank you for doing this for us. Amen and amen. Listen, we're going to talk today about uh, Scripture in St. Luke, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Um, it's called, What is the Difference Between Being Healed or Being Made Whole? And I, I read the Amplified Version, so some of the words may not show up in here as I had uh, uh, mentioned in the title, but in the King James, it says in the latter part that uh, they were made whole, the one who came back and, and uh, asked, uh, gave God praise and thank him for healing him. He was made whole. So let's read the scripture so we can get the full content of what's being said here. While Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, he was met by 10 lepers who stood at a distance and they raised their voice and called out, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were miraculously healed and made clean. One of them, when he saw he was uh, healed, turned back, glorifying and praising, honoring God with a loud voice. And he, and he uh, lay his face down with, to Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. He was a Samaritan. Then Jesus said, were there not ten of you who were cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was there no one found to return to give thanks and praise to God except this foreigner? Jesus said to him, get up and go on your way for your faith, your personal trust in me, your confidence in God's power has restored you to health. And it's like I said, in the King James Version, it says, he, uh, you, he was made whole. So the difference I'm trying to bring today about being healed and being made whole comes with a simple premise. Jesus saw that this one was thankful to God for healing him and cause him to come out of the situation and to be made whole. So let's talk about leprosy real quick and, and see what, what we're talking about here. We're not talking about just um, uh, things being washed away when he healed them or they were healed, but there was a certain law that was put in place in Leviticus. And it's, I'm just, I'll read verse, um, let's see, chapter 13, verse 5. It says, when the person is leprosy, the, the priest shall examine it on the seventh day. And if the examination of the infection has changed and has not spread on the skin, then the priest shall isolate him for seven more days. The priest shall examine him again on the seventh day. And if the infection has more uh, normal color and the spot has not spread on the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is only a scab. And he, a, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. So let's talk about what leprosy is and see what we're talking about here. Leprosy in this case here was called, um, let me say it right, it's HC, it's called, um, let me see, I got it written here somewhere, and it says it's better known as Hansen's disease, Hansen's disease. So this particular disease, or Hansen's disease, or leprosy, call it what you will, is a type of, of plague by some bacterial function that causes the skin to change color, to come open sores, to even to the point of losing limbs and uh, things along that, along that line. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because when Jesus said they were healed and cleansed, there was a certain thing they had to do for the priests. And as I read earlier in the book of Leviticus, they had to present themselves before the priests so the priests could examine them. Then gave them so much time to make sure that the examination was right, by giving them another seven days to see if the healing is taking place. And if they, if the sore was not uh, growing, if it was not nothing but a scab, then he was commanded to clean his clothes 
and clean himself up as well, and they'd be pronounced clean. They could enter back into the congregation at that point. But also, there was also a stigma that stuck with the lepers because they were considered poor, destitute, and without. And you can understand why, because if they didn't have, they had those diseases on them. They were probably pushed to the left and to the right because they wanted to be in contact with the people because this leprosy, if you have close contact with them over a long period of time, it can spread. That's called extensive contact, not necessarily by a bypassing contact. So the reason I'm bringing that up is because, let's look at it this way. When they were told to go see the priest, they were going back with no soul, with, with um, the wounds being closed up, um, things that were taken, things that were happening before, being healed over, so that when the priest saw it, he saw there was only a mark there or a, uh, a scab of some type. But some lost fingers, some lost toes, you know, because this disease was eating, eating, eating away to them. But in this process of them being cleansed, healed and cleansed, they weren't made whole. They still had whatever happened to them stop at that point, and then they were pronounced clean at that point. But when this one Samaritan came back, and gave praise to God for the healing of his body, for the healing of what was going on, which means that he recognized there were some changes in his flesh as he was going along with the other nine, that he had to go back and give thanks to the Lord for healing him, giving him that deliverance he needed in his body. Now, he went a step further, Jesus did, and said, because your faith has been in initiated here, that you understand that this gift came from God and not from man. You are now made whole. Your health is now restored, which means that what was lost is then being regained. If he had a finger toe missing, it was back. It was, it was something to that extent, a fullness of recovery. So being healed can stop the process. This is not in every situation now, but healed in certain situations will stop the process and get you to the point where you can still navigate and go forward. Being made whole is being like being made red, brand new all over again. Sometimes we look for healing, ask for healing, and we get a partial. We think, why didn't I get healed? Well, what are you thankful? Just ask him. Did you thank God for healing you? Did you use your faith to, to, to bring yourself to a position to where God said, I, I, because of your faith, because of your faith, I'm going to give you complete healing, which means I'm making you whole. I'm bringing you back to full health. All those things that were there before are now gone away. Because you have now been made whole. Your health has been restored again. So these are things we have to look at because no matter what we go through in life, we have to be positioned to recognize where it comes from. If I lay my hands on you and you get healed, it's not me healing you. It's God healing you. It's God doing the work for you and through you. And when you give him praise for doing what he's done for you, he can make you whole. To the point where the remembrance of that thing in your flesh is no more. The reason I bring this up today is because we got a we got a lot of people in the church, in the world, who knows how to call on the name of Jesus when they're in trouble. But very rarely do I hear a continuation of praise. Not saying that people are not praising him, but it's not as automatic. See, I remember as a child, mama told me, when somebody gives me something, say thank you. I appreciate it. Because we want to show that we care about the giver given to us. We have to then be able to give back to him what is given to us. He gives us love. We give love back to him. He heals us and calls and cause to have joy. We then bring the joy back to him. Because he has healed. He has delivered. He has set us free. That's in everything. So in all things, we must give him praise. Thanking him for what he has done, what he is doing, and what he will do. Praise is the avenue. And understand this, scripture says God inhabits the praises of his people. If God inhabits the praise of his people, why is he there while you're praising him? What, what draws him into that praise? Because he wants to join in your joy. He recognizes that when you recognize him, he's excited that you are excited about him. And he joys with you. Okay? No, in the midst of the joy, 
that he that you bring forth to him, he's then bringing forth wholeness, healing, deliverance in every aspect. Praise is very, very important. There is a difference between just being healed and being made whole. I will strive toward being whole. Okay? Healing is beautiful. And it keeps you going in the right direction. But never forget to praise God for his healing, for his action he has toward you. To bring you deliverance, bring you healing, bring you everything you need. For God ain't happy to praise his people. He's praising right along with you. And he's bringing forth deliverance right there in the midst of the praise, even on a greater level. This is a great example because when he came, when the young man came back and praised God for delivering him and healing him, thinking Jesus would be the avenue for which he healed him, God brought forth total deliverance to that young man, to where he was made whole, where he was made healthy. What am I saying? Sometimes relationships we have with our fellow brothers and sisters, those situations sometimes get healed, but not whole, because sometimes people hold animosity, hold things inside of them that cause them not to see things clearly as they should. And because of that, they fall to the left and to the right. There's an opportunity for failure there. But when things are made whole, the heart changes, the mind changes. All this changes to a point where it's not held against you, and you'll come together as one again. So you can be that which God wants you to be in his land. He said, I rather, I want you to be whole. I want you to be one as we are one. Now, one is, comes in our attitude toward each other as we focus the attitude toward God. What is the best thing that we could do is give God praise. Now, worship is another thing because that's because you're already in the boat, if you will. You're you right there with God and you're thanking him for being who he is. You're worshiping him because he is. Not because of what he can do for you, but because he is. We give him praise for what he's done. This is what... This, this scripture brings out when you worship the Lord, you give him praise for what he has done and he's doing will do. That brings God into the midst of it to bring him forth that healing to a wholeness. God wants you whole. God wants you beyond healed. He won't give no room for the devil to work his way into personal relationships, into uh, how you feel about a church, how you feel about certain people. All those things have to be put under the blood to wash it away from you. So you won't be found caught in the midst of that. And then God can look at you through the blood as righteous. Because through the blood of Jesus, we're made righteous. Because we're being made righteous, we now have the availability of going before the throne room without fear or doubt. Because he will look at us as if we are Jesus himself. Because we are then counted without sin. So going back to the subject here, what's the difference between being healed and being made whole? All are works of, of God. But while our reaction to that works of God must come with praise. Praise him who done all things for you, through you, and to you. Praise him because he's worthy of the praise. The things he does are praiseworthy. Not only because of the things that we see in the prior scripture before he was crucified, but even after the fact that he sent forth the Holy Spirit for us to have in our person the baptism, the fulfilling of the Holy Spirit to guide us, direct us, and keep us in all things that we do. And remember, the Holy Spirit is God, so don't think he's less than because he's called the third person. He's one with the Father, one with the Son, and he's with us. And because of that, we thank him for that. We need to become more thankful. Like I said, when mama told us, we, when somebody give us something, so we say thank you. Daddy saying the same thing now. The father's letting us, letting us know that when we thank him, when we praise him for doing wonderful things in our life, he opens up the doors of heaven and pours out blessings for us. He's in the midst of that praise because he wants to let you know that he loves you praising him as you praise him. He's praising you. He's giving you glory because you're glorying in his glory in the respect of knowing that God will not fail. He will not fall to the left or to the right. He's right there with you to help you become the person that you can be because he has anointed all of us from birth, even before birth, as to what we're to be. But we have to recognize that anointing that's on us and walk in that anointing so that when we walk according to what God wants us to walk into, we find ourselves strengthened and empowered because in everything, 
We should give him thanks. We should give him praise. Glorify God in all things. Glorify him because he's worthy of the praise. So as I end this brief conversation today, if in, if in anything that God does for you, do not forget to give him praise. Do not, for tell him, do not forget to tell him thank you. Thank you, Father, for being God in my life. Thank you for healing my situation. Thank you, God, for healing my body. Thank you, God, for being God in my life. You want to make sure that you, you echo that out your mouth because you're introducing yourself to receiving the abundance what God has for you because you're showing him the love that he has for you. you you're loving him. You love, you're loving him back, back and forth. So in order to get that relationship where you're in a position to give God this glory, what you need to do is if you're not saved, accept him as your personal savior. Romans 3, 9, 10 says so simply. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe it in your heart, the God who raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe that, you have confessed out your mouth, you're saved. Confession is the point. You got to speak it out your mouth. It's important. Once you've gotten to that point, remember this is on the door opener to get you into the kingdom. You've now been delivered from the penalty of sin by that confession. Now, in order to grow in God, you have to then continue to stay in his presence. Scripture says also, Work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling, which means you're going to spend a lot of time going before God in prayer and in fasting and studying his word. Those things come together as one. So when you do those things, they help you become stronger and stronger because when you do that, you're not seeking his face. You get to understand his principles, understand how he is and why he is. And because of doing that, you would then have the availability of being what God wants you to be in this land. And that's mean. That means a child of the king. And also, you're also a citizen of heaven. You don't hear as an ambassador because when you learn from him, he don't expect you to hold it to yourself. He asks you to confess it out, tell your testimony, let God know that you know, let the people know that you know God so that when they hear this testimony, they can draw them into what God has for them. You never know how many people you touch when you tell a simple testimony what God has done for you. And then I say this, be healed, but also be made whole. Be healed, but also be made whole. Recognize that God has a greater thing for you. if You're willing to ask for it and walk in it. If you are saved today, accept what uh, the, the invitation to Christ today, send me a little note on the YouTube page or shoot me an email. I'd like to Pray with you. I'd like to talk with you. Encourage you more so in the Lord so you can find yourself doing his will and learning how to get away from your personal will that does not do you any benefit in respect to knowing God. So I, again, thank you for listening to me today and I pray that you continue to walk in his path. And one thing about it, he says he's going to give you peace that passes all understanding. This peace is, is built upon you knowing who God is Know his ways and knowing him in a personal way so that you don't have any fear, doubt, or anything moving forward in life because you have trusted in God. Hallelujah. Because you trust in him, he show his favor to you. So be blessed. Be in God's favor. As I often say, be peace so you will have peace. God bless you.